Hey, good morning guys. This morning coming to you with another daily schlag. It is Thursday, which is the day we do our live show. I know I've talked about this before, uh, but I really do love the live show. It's called The Gospel of Two Wheels. And uh, we get together every Thursday morning at 7.30 Mountain Time and talk about dirt bikes. And it's awesome. Uh, you guys all tune in, comment. I just want to say thank you to all of you who've done that in the past. Um, it really, really means a lot to me. Um, I just love uh, connecting with you guys. I know it's not actually talking face to face, but it's just really great. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, today's going to be a good day. We're talking about Sargent's Colorado, uh, where we rode. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll put a card right up here for the uh, videos of Sargent's. We went over there on 4th of July, had a blast, rode with the kid and uh, with the big kids. It was super duper fun. So yeah, here's my rig. Uh, if you guys wonder what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> that's the rig. There's my little webcam. That's my light. There's my coffee. That's my laptop that I do it on. Um, normally, that is the wall that's behind me uh, that has all the cool stuff on it. But we're remodeling. Um, we built this desk. I'm pretty excited. Pretty happy about that. I built that desk. Mounted it. Um, I built those shelves. We're going to have books and stuff up there. Um... Yeah, it's just uh, changing up the office a little bit. So um, this gospel two wheels is going to look like this. So anyway, I better get after it, guys. Uh, yeah, we're going to head into the shop here. Got a lot going on. So I guess it's time to get on with the daily schlag. <laughs> right on, guys. We are back at the shop. Uh, Zach's first job is a fork seals on the CRF 250L. Um, a great little motorcycle, but arguably relatively boring. No offense to you if this is your motorcycle and you love it, I hope you do. Uh, because I mean, that's the whole awesome thing about dirt bikes. They make one for everybody. And not everybody uh, wants to go fast or have a twitchy fire breathing machine. Uh, so yeah, it's awesome. And actually, I like the tank on it. I haven't seen that before. I haven't seen the big tank from a Cherbis on one before, so that's actually pretty cool. Um, it would actually be an awesome, like, town runner short dual sport thing. Oh uh, yeah, he's doing fork seals and a full service on that. Um, I am going to be pulling my KTM up here because after the weekend in Sargent's and the Thursday night right before, it is in dire need of a service. So I'm gonna pull that thing up and kind of go over what I do to rehab a bike after, oh, three good days of beating. So I'm gonna go grab that thing and we'll get after it. All right, I know that's not Daisy, my uh, 250. I forgot, I gotta take care of this thing first, then I can work on my bike. So. Uh, this is a 350 XCFW that uh, is the oil is coming out of the spark plug hole. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I think I know what's going on. I think we can fix it super easy. Uh, but he went to change the spark plug and oil came out and that's not awesome. So get the seat and tank off and I'll show you what's going on there. There's definitely oil coming out of the spark plug hole. That's not gonna make it run right. Quick tool highlight. Uh, a tool that I absolutely love from Matco. The little ratcheting wrenches, and like lots of people make ratcheting wrenches and gear wrench, anyway, they're awesome. But these are freaking cool. Flex head and uh, super simple, no little switchy thing. So I really like these. All right guys, so I got the top off of this. I'll be right back to it. But let me just show you something interesting about the CRF250L suspension. So flip that over, Zach. There's literally nothing in there. <laughs> no bolt or anything like that. So there's mid damper thing in there, sort of. Anyway, um, we're learning right now. We don't really know <laughs> how to work on them, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, that snap ring, pop the snap ring out, take it out, and then. So that's the difference, guys. If you've wondered what the difference between a CRF250L and a CRF250R and XR, 
Oh, there's a lot. There's a way more than just that. But that is one massive, massive difference. That is super duper inexpensive old school suspension on those. Um, all right, so now on to the 350. So it can leak oil here. I just left the key in it. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, oh, sorry, am I there. on? Yeah, now you're on. Say hi. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Ride your dirt bikes! Yes! <laughs> Oh yeah, that is absolutely going on there. Gary Buston is going on the channel with that one. All right, so there's oil in the spark plug hole, we know, so we gotta figure that out. There's a few places it could be leaking from. It can be coming from, actually, there's this gasket here, but that seemed to be sealed up nice and good. Um, but there's also this tube comes out and there's O-rings down in there. So um, my guess is one of the O-rings is uh, worn out, gotten flat, whatever. Um, so gonna clean this all up, put new O-rings in it, slide the bottle back together, run it, make sure it's all good, but that should take care of it. Um, but yeah, um, that's kind of how these things work. They're a little bit funky. It's not like any other uh, four stroke. Um, yeah, Japanese ones don't work like that, but pretty much all the KTMs work like that now. All right guys, so I got the O-rings out. I figured I'd just check in and show you what's going on. Uh, they're not cut or torn or anything like that, but they are super flat. So, one second. There we go. See how flat that is? That's not right. <laughs> uh, so, I'm hoping Davis Service Center has some because I don't have any here. I'm um, going to go check and see. Get this thing back together and get it going for the guy so he can just ride it this weekend. Um, but yeah, super simple fix. Uh, but definitely something you need to pay attention to uh, when you're doing a top end or just after a certain amount of time because I think they just get hot and flatten out. So there you go. There's the focus. All right. You see how much more round that is? That's gonna work a lot better. So I'm gonna put those in the grooves, slide this all back together, fire it up, and make sure it's working good and not leaking. Uh, then we'll move on to the next project, which will be my bike. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be uh, doing a big service on that sucker. Quick question for all of you watching, how many of you like mung beans? Uh, <laughs> Zach and I were just discussing the qualities and benefits of mung beans here. I think we all know that Zach Sheets is old mung bean sheets. Uh, <laughs> he's finishing up the forks on the uh, CRF250L. Time to service this guy. I know I've kind of gone over what we do on a service a few times up here. It never hurts to touch on just the basic things. Um, and these are things you ought to really look at um, with uh, every time you do a little bit of work. Uh, the first thing I do is wash it when it's been super dirty. It's all washed up nice and happy. The very next thing I do is lube the chain because if you wash it and don't lube that chain, you will end up with a rusty chain that wears out really fast. So I actually, while it's on the stand from washing, I lube that up, make sure it's all good. Uh, next thing is the air filter. Pull that sucker off. Let's take a look and see how bad it is. Oh yeah, it's gnarly. That is one weekend in Sargent's, but here's the important part. The inside is nice and clean. You'll see there's no film. So that's the important part. Um, that Pro Seal gasket I'm using has been awesome. I'm actually starting to stock those now. I think that's a really good idea. Just put a little bit of oil, uh, extra air filter oil on the air filter, um, and it seals up super, super well. So really happy about that. So I like to do that first. Well, I clean and all that thing first, but then I like to get the air filter out next, get it cleaned, and get it drying while I'm doing all the rest of it so um, that it's ready to go. Uh, yeah, the uh, rest of it's basically oil change and all that stuff, but I will come back and check in with, I got one more tip here um, right after I get done with all the normal stuff. 
All right, guys, so just about done here. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is that uh, if you've watched the videos of me going up the horseshoe trail and all the steam coming out of my motorcycle, uh, that was, uh, yeah. Um, so I normally run Evans in my two strokes. I don't like it in four strokes, but uh, two strokes I normally run Evans, and that actually would not have happened with Evans in it. Um, but I had normal coolant in it from the last time I rebuilt it after the giant overheating mess in Oklahoma, and I just never changed it out. So um, that day after I overheated the heck out of it, I uh, just I poured water into it when we got to the top of the trail. Uh, so that had enough fluid in it for the rest of the trip. Um, but so when that happens, what you want to do is get home and flush that and get either just your normal good coolant back in it or whatever. I went ahead and put Evans back in it. So now it's all flushed. It's got Evans in it. I'm really happy about that. But the main thing I was going to talk about is after you wash a bike really well, um, kind of no matter where you live, but especially here, there's a lot of hard water deposits that end up on things. And that can really mess up fork seals and shock seals. If it dries and then you let it sit and then you go ride it and push it down, it can uh, cut seals. So I like to use this stuff. Uh, it's from Muck Off. It's their motorcycle protectant. Honestly, Pledge works just fine. Any of the shiny stuff for plastics works good. Um, this is the stuff that I use and like, whatever. But honestly, uh, if you want to save money, Pledge is uh, great. But what you want to do is take... that and that and then even hit the shock shaft and then I want to take a rag or something and run it around there and kind of get it you know make sure you're getting it all the way around the fork um, and wipe it off you don't want a bunch of excess stuff on there but you know, just get it all the way around the fork. That way, uh, the next time you ride it, everything will slide nice and smooth and not tear up fork seals. So, uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for the air filter to dry. Put that back in. Get this thing out of here. Uh, I got a 85 tire to change and then a windshield to put on a Yamaha Raider. All right, guys, end of the day. I'm going to combine today's schlag with tomorrow's schlag. So when you see this, it will be a, an amalgam of Thursday and Friday. Uh, but one of the coolest things that just showed up is this 2020 factory edition um ktm 450sx uh it is here because we're going to take the suspension off and send it to brady at uh, tbt in oklahoma he's going to dial this thing in for this guy he races supercross and motocross and uh brady's going to make this thing work way way better for him so super stoked about that mr sheets is staying late and working on a lovely 250 xcf ktm arguably those bikes are the hardest bikes in the world to make run right. <laughs> like, so he's going to clean the carburetor and he's going to get it running. Maybe he'll get it running well, but if he doesn't, it's not his fault. Because uh, those things are impossible to jet. Um, and then tomorrow, 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 we will be disassembling the KX500 motor. Um, there's something dangerously wrong with the transmission, so that's going to be awesome. So yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, we're back. It's Friday. It's the last day before a week-long vacation, and that's awesome. I'm super stoked uh, to get out and actually do a non-moto vacation. I know that's rare and probably hard for some of you to believe. But, uh, I will be headed down to the Gulf Shores of Alabama um, to hang out on the beach for a week with my mom and dad and my brother and his kids and my family, so it's gonna be awesome. Uh, so my first job today is to get the suspension off of this brand new 2020 450 SXF factory edition and get it boxed up and sent to Brady um, at TBT in Oklahoma. Uh, Mr. Sheets is working on the crazy KX500. Uh, he's taking apart the motor because there's something wrong on the transmission. So uh, we'll check in with that when we get that uh, closer. The uh, top end is also junk, <laughs> so uh, big scratches on the cylinder and the uh, piston, so that's going to need to get sent out for sure, uh, but there's definitely something weird in the transmission because even when it's in neutral, it, it's not neutral, so we've got to figure out what's going on there, and uh, yeah, so we'll check in. I'm going to, like I said, take this KTM apart and get the stuff boxed up.
All right, guys, it is the end of the day and the end of the week, and it is time for vacation. Um, I got the 450 suspension all packed up and sent to Brady. Zach Sheets is over there being angry because he's got time off. He hates time off. He only likes to work and punch people's faces. So, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, guys, I love you. Thanks for sticking around uh, for this video. I really appreciate it. If you like what we're doing, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That would be awesome. Um, but most importantly, um, I really hope you get out and spread the gospel of two wheels. Uh, give me a little bit of time. Probably not going to be any videos for a week now, but when I get back, we're going to hit it hard and heavy um, and get back after it. So, yeah, I hope what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to get out and ride your dirt bikes!